All right, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to Card Talk. I'm Ryan, joined as always by Tyler and Lou. Big episode today. We have a lot to get into. Jason has already set the bar high for play of the week, saying it is another all time play of the week. So we will get into that here shortly. We want to talk about the Logo Man, the Avalanche won the Sinley Cup. We got a latest launch coming up. But first, let's start with what's on your mind. Lou, we'll start with you in hopes that Tyler's internet connection will improve by the time he's up. Yeah, yeah. I actually I actually feel like if he's li- if if as soon as he comes back, he should go first because while it works, it works. Let's take advantage of it while it works. <laughs> can you guys hear he's me fr- loud and clear? All right, we can hear you loud and clear, so let's go. Let's roll. Let's set the stage. You're yeah. MIA. We're you're in an undisclosed location having a blast. Your internet sec- is questionable at best, so let's go. Super questionable. Super not questionable location, except it's storming right now, so it's getting questionable internet. But I have two frozen compadres on the screen. I'm a little under the weather. I'm a little sick. I saw the Avalanche won the Stanley Cup. I was pretty excited about that. I was happy for my cousin Bob and uh, the homie that makes the logo like card display things. Yeah. That we met at Red Bull. He's yes. a big Avalanche fan. Good for him. Um, feels like American sports calendar has kind of wrapped. I'm sad. I'm supposed to be in the Swiss Switzerland for the Alps, but some things change. But Tour de France starts on Friday. Big. That's a big one. The Tour de France. Uh, so you're not going to the Tour de France. I'm not going to be at the France. Wait. Wait. I, what? I, I had the best. You had to adjust. Okay. Well, next year I, for the front. I know. I had, to, I had to adjust. I'm in for all, but I'm not going to the Tour de France. <laughs> it doesn't even start. It doesn't even start in France. How crazy is that? Um, but you got the British GP this weekend, right? Yeah, yeah. Silverstone is this weekend. Big week. That's big like week. a that's like a big race, right? Yeah, it's one of the one of the tier mm-hmm. one races, I would say. Did you see that ESPN won the media rights for F1? Yes, I saw that. I think the bid in. was like 75, 78 million. Yeah, I was interested by that. I wonder if they're going to start showing commercials now. I'd imagine yes. And now he's gone. Yeah, I got to imagine so too. Yeah. All right, shout out to Ty for his. Uh, Ty, way his, to push through. His what's on your mind this week, my man Ty. A little under the weather. You know, skeptical internet at best. Uh, but Lou, what's uh, what's Credit on you for powering through that, Ty? That was like a real, that was a real good job by you. Um, I appreciate that. So there's a couple things. Um, it was obviously a big baseball weekend for your boy. Um, split the series with the first place New York Yankees. So, you know, that little team in Houston staying alive, finding a way to stay alive, 16 hitless innings. Um, managed to split the series. That was good. But what I really wanted to focus on today was a couple things. Um, One of those being the national coming up, and I'm very excited about that. And the other thing I heard, we we heard from our boy Fishpaw Sports Cards um, that he had a friend in his shop recently uh, who had recently been diagnosed with cancer. So I wanted to give him some love. Um, He loves the show. We're going to give him a FaceTime soon uh, in the next couple weeks. So to get to talk to him soon. Um, Jay, do you have his name for us? Fish Paul, thank you for letting us know. Mm-hmm. Sending him some love, sending him some positive energy. So I wanted to make sure I did that. It's been on my mind heavy all weekend. Yeah, our boy Jack Sawyer. Appreciate you, Jack. Love you, bro. So uh, Ty dropped out. Jack uh, actually came into I can my still shop. Hear. I can still oh, hear. Wow. I just turned off, I just turned <laughs> that off was video. A, so that was I'm a surprise. In, in God mode, I i love this so ty's in the background so shout out to those watching on video can hear ty just can't see ty uh <laughs> some wizard of the Oz type stuff jay said i uh, know but jack came into the shop last summer got to meet him and his family they drove down uh had some uh talk with jack since he started uh you know his cancer treatment uh yeah fish paw sent the sent jason a message on it mm-hmm. on the car talk page the other day as he was talking to Jack about how chemo is going and all of that. So, you know, definitely sending some prayers to Jack. Hopefully, you know, you know, they're, uh, 
uh, they're fighting through that the best they can. You know, would love, yep, to, uh, love to be able to FaceTime him and just, yeah, we're going to talk to know, him for sure. Send some positive vibes his way. I just, you know, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, thanks Lou for bringing that up. Shout out to Jay for making it happen. Shout out to Fishpaw Paul yep. for, you know, sending Jay a message and shout out to Jack the most for sure. Jack, uh, national four weeks yep. away. I'm fired up. Crazy. I, I just can't even believe it, right? We we start this countdown as a joke on, you know, 355 days or 358 days post-national. Like we, we joke about it and then it's 275 days and then it's 195 days. Like it's it's a joke throughout the year and then we get four weeks away and you're like, oh my goodness, like four weeks, like that's crazy. 29 days uh, officially by the t- since, you know, from where we're at recording this, by the time it goes live, it'll be 28 days. Just hard to believe, right? It's going to be here been talking about it for a while i'm going to be very intrigued with how the national plays out i'm pumped yep right i had a meeting about it yesterday wow i had a i had a national preparation meeting yesterday with uh our boy adam rips and our other boy james cook shout out supreme sales wow so my man wow damn i can't buy that that? That sounds like a fantastic meeting it was wow it's like, it wasn't Supreme really a south of front be... type meeting. Supreme sales will be in the building for sure. Nice. Found sounds yeah, like he's... our operation is going to be serious. Ryan, are you a little bit worried about the competition that you're going to have? <laughs> should Ty? Only thing I need to know is should I bring a pricing gun? Oh wow. Um, if I know anything about Supreme sales, it's that he is going to have the pricing gun loaded with a double barrel. That's a fact. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of your team will be prepared, except for you. I don't know. A prepared team means everyone's prepared. It's a good point. And the team, the team, the team. It's not all about you, Ry. Oh, I, it's saying. definitely not about me. I'm just curious if Ty will have a microphone, decent internet. Like, will he be available for like Car Talk Live? Like, my man. I'm just curious, if, like, if if that will. I would be, never like, take. The, I would never take shots like this. I not know. when he's in the south oh, of France. Right. Yeah, come on, right. I'm battling. I'm sick. I'm drinking some tea right now. <laughs> Meanwhile, you're like going to hang out with Joe Burrow later. It's just, like I, I've been, I've been going real. I've been taking it real easy with Jay recently, and I love Jay. But to be like, do you want to plug the event, and to not give us the info for the event is like, <laughs> I want to talk about the event. The, I know the it's event, Friday night. Jason is prepared. One hundred percent prepared. Hey guys, you guys want to talk about this event? Yeah, sure. Jay. I'm pumped. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to talk about the event, Jay. July twenty ninth. Tennessee Beer Hall. July twenty ninth. Right. Yes. Five thirty p.m. But yeah, let's just skip over that. We'll do, an, we'll do an official announcement soon. Yes, we will definitely be doing that. But it'll be early Friday night. Hope to see everybody there. It's gonna be a good time. It's gonna be a good time. What about uh, what about the logo man? We had predictions. Do you feel bad about what you said? I'm 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 actually really surprised. Really surprised. I really thought I'm I was going to be more surprised because it was very clear to Tyler and I what was going on, and we adjusted our prediction accordingly. That's that's a good job out of you guys, honestly. Like that's 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 on me. I should have adjusted. I can't um, believe you're admitting that you were wrong about this. Yeah, I just, you know, it happens to the best of us, and it's just, we'll be more prepared for the next one, but yeah, definitely just, you know, optimism, and didn't, you know, I expected it to do three, what did I say, 4.8, 5.2, like, I expected it to do those numbers, I really did, I'm surprised it only, you know, I mean, still, we say only, like, it's not yeah, a lot 2. of Yeah, 2.4 million dollars is a lot Millions of dollars, that. like, that, yeah. that's a lot, like. So. It is a lot, I think it's a combination of a few factors, number one, I would say, you know, the uncertainty of the world i think is a factor here yep agreed it's hard to argue with that whether that actually directly impacts bidding at this level i don't know but i would imagine um there's something to be said for the narrative around the card and the public i think that hurt a lot too did bid a- i think i saw that the bid action was pretty there was one bid after the first three days is that right that i don't know i saw something like that please don't quote me on that someone could pull that information up um so it just seems like there wasn't that much interest outside of the initial uh, when it first dropped on auction. So I don't know. Just there's a lot of weird factors built into that that I think are indicators 
and things to be aware of for the market at large when you see a card like that sell for 2.4. Yeah, shout out to the guys that, you know, were owners of the card. Nice little shout out to the old owners, shout out to the new owners. Pulled or owner. Pulled in six weeks, have nearly what seven hundred thousand dollars a piece. Not a not, not bad. Not a bad day. Not a bad day's work. So not bad. Very, very uh very cool to see. Um what else do we what else? Oh, the abs. Abs. Ty, yeah. you mentioned earlier this is mm-hmm. re- like outside of baseball, not really a lot of sports on for a little while. It's going to uh it's gonna get a little slow here for the next six weeks or so. I think football, I think the Hall of Fame games like the weekend after the national. Mm-hmm. So five, six weeks away. Yeah, we have like four weeks of quiet time here. Real summertime. Real, yeah, real, real summer. I mean it's it's a live golf summer. Like is it? Simply put. Maybe not. Have you been watching the live? Maybe. No, I haven't seen a second of it. My man Ty was, was about as anti live last week at, last week as you can get. So Ty's a PGA yeah, guy a through PGA and guy. through. That's true. For the... Ty, yeah, Ty's a, a a PGA guy through and through. So for we sure. definitely we definitely can't. So yeah, the that. Avalanche. They were the favorites from the beginning. It seemed like we were all Dominated. pretty certain. Dominated. We were all pretty certain whoever they played in the finals was going to lose. The Lightning did put up a good fight though. Kept it interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, they're good. McCarr, Stud, McKinnon, good. Like they're a team's. Is your boy Aaron starting a hockey PC? No, I did not. Is he? Keandre Miller, yeah, Keandre Miller, Rangers. He got a one on one. Oh yeah, yeah, the premiere. I saw I put that in chat about like overpaying for a one on one. Have you, uh, have you, have you done that? Have you ever had to do that before, Lou? Ty. What? So like Aaron was talking about it in, in like the in the group, but he talked about like how the card yes. was. Uh, I don't know. Let's say it was like eight hundred dollars, and he offered like it was up for like a thousand or eight hundred bucks, or twelve hundred bucks or a thousand. He offered like eight hundred, and then the guy came back at a thousand, and he countered nine hundred. I th- again, I would love to ask Aaron if this is right. I think this yep. is if I read this correctly. He read it for nine hundred, and the offer was still pending. And he's like, I don't want to lose it, so I think he just clicked ex- buy it now. So I think it was a thousand offered eight hundred. The guy came back and not like at nine, and Aaron countered, and then ended up just paying full price to get it have you ever done that before because there's there's a couple instances for me where i remember like wanting a card sending an offer and then the card just selling from either getting a better offer or just selling outright and i look back on it i'm like i really really regret this yeah i mean that's that sounds like an all-time panic move from Aaron, but i guess it doesn't really matter right if you don't really care how much you're paying like if it's just going in your collection and never coming out who cares right 300 bucks if you if, if you don't mind a 300 dollars like who am i to say that's a mistake but if you're trying to do a j you pay someone 20 bucks and you could have offered them 10 that's that's a bad job yeah and then try to would have counted 700 i love the lower off yeah oh yeah that's true jay me and jay were going back and forth looking for stuff for uh prism and like we're going back and forth on offered somebody so i forget what the number was but call it like the card was 600 i offered them 350 they came back at like 450 i think i came back and offered them 275 like you gotta go lower than your initial offer the first time just get them off kilter a little bit and see what and see what they do when you do that it's just straight decline and then i decline every offer you make after (laughs) fine i'm more that's the risk i'm going to take i gotta make sure we set the vibes but we know overpaying when i'm in charge yeah that's that's great lou i love that you're trying to teach jay and get jay and uh, you know in i'm just trying to get jay mindset yeah just that's what we need we're a negotiation podcast. That's, that's that. Do. That's a leader, man. What? Wow. Yeah, I'm taking what two shots at Jay, and I'm no. pulling. I'm pulling away from that. I apologize, Jay. No, Jay. I want to like. I would love to get Jay's thoughts about this in the chat because I asked this the other day. Jay. So Jason uh, is working on the Prism Rainbow for Michael Carter. Now, Jay, just to confirm, right? Just to confirm, you say you're going for the rainbow. Yes. Are you getting one of every non-autographed card, or are you mixing rainbows? Because I think mixing. you're mixing. Gotcha, gotcha. Mixing. But but I'm I'm planning on the Why? ones that I only have the non-autos. I'm planning on upgrading to autos throughout the process if when I can find them. Some of them are just really difficult to find. But um, I'm having a lot of fun with just you know ha- with just collecting the whole thing. Like there's, it's weird what some cards go for. 
like compared to what should be okay. A good example, I Lou and I, Lou, Lou helped me out, but um, there was a gold, the gold to 10, the, the, the regular gold to 10 sold for like a hundred bucks, the Michael Carter. So I scooped it, but like the um, the bidding on the uh, the the the, the 15 disco purple, whatever it was, or disco pink sold for more than that but like where am i going to find another one like the, the disco the, the no huddle discos are like the hardest ones to find like those are like four of the seven that i'm missing right now or like the neon green disco and i assume that's probably because right i mean correct me if i'm wrong people aren't ripping as much no huddle as they are the other stuff and so like they may just be still sealed up in boxes like i just haven't seen those surface yet so like uh you know but but i have a, a notifications on every time a new michael carter prison goes up and I've been eyeballing it. So I have like five that I'm bidding on right now. And Lou sent me a, a sheet that had, uh, you know, the entire rainbow on it. So I've just been clicking them off. It was like, oh. yeah, I have an iPhone note set up that I shared with Jay. So now anytime Jay adds to his rainbow, I get a notification on my phone. It's really interesting. Five o'clock <laughs> in the morning, he's getting an update that a note what a, disco gold. What a up. job out of Lou, man. My man Lou taking Jay under his wing. Just I'm a team guy, guys. right? The team, the team, the this team. Guy right there, yeah. I mean, other than that, I can get behind that. That's not really my kind of quote. Like, hate to see that. That's more of a Michigan type thing. Not really for me, but. Being um, a team player? Yeah, just the team. The team, the team. You're a selfish guy, is what you just said. Yeah. That's what you just Sorry. said. Sorry. You guys are just busy. Right. Yeah, is that, is that generally. Is that generally how Martin, Rainbow goes, though? Martin, you have to the work. <laughs> We got the Wizard of Oz talking. Wizard of Oz. I don't Wizard know what he's saying. Such a wild. Moment. I don't know what's going on. Ty. Can you come back in, Ty? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's better I'm when you're saying, frozen. Honestly, the Wizard. I'm saying that-, that Ryan is being, being a team guy. Meanwhile, Ohio State is busy trademarking the word "the." True. Cringe move. Mm, I don't know. Debatable. Mm. But I'm not saying I wouldn't. I wouldn't have done real it. Like, creative university. Yeah, I just brother, come on. Like the you got two words. We got one word. You got two. You got we are brother. We are. Come on. Let's not get. Let's not we get carried away. Something. It's like a saying. It means something. Yeah, yeah the like Ohio State University like, it means the. something too. We are is not like oh wow that's the best thing ever. It's not like roll tide. Like that's great. Like that's a great one. I would argue it's very similar. We are and, and roll tide. Yeah. Those are, those are <laughs> very much on the same plane. You're, you're no. going to take it out on no. this argument, my friend. Yeah, that's no. Funny. We are lame. No thanks. All right, so are we doing play of the week because you're annoying me now. Jay had a question about the prison rainbow. All right, Jay. I did. Uh, I did. Whoa! Whoa! We're beeping. No, it's fine. I got the beep ready. I got the beep ready. Right. Good last I beeped two curses out last week. I just have one this week. Right. When you're collecting a rainbow, like that's you're supposed to stick to auto or non auto. Like you got to make a decision beforehand, and it, 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 like yeah, typically like when I've done like like especially for prism because prism's like the most popular one. For me, like the rainbow is one or the other, like base or non auto. Because like because you said like what you mentioned was you're gonna upgrade your autos in you're gonna upgrade non autos to autos in time but there's a lot more non auto parallels like the prism disco out of 15 or the prism disco out of five those i think the out of five has an auto but i don't think the out of 15 has an auto so they don't all have a direct auto replacement um again not everybody collects differently right you know collect how you collect um i was just more curious on like your uh, approach to it because you're what's going to happen is you're going to get ones that don't have an auto equivalent and you're going to get one uh, an auto that might not have a base equivalent so it's like at what point like is the goal to get both of them is it just to get one or the other just more curious yeah i think what my move is i'm going to get one of those uh show your slabs displays and just i'm not going to get them graded i'm just going to one touch them and and just basically replace the non-auto ones when i get the autos but i'm 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 getting really close to being done with this rainbow it's crazy so yeah you're way far ahead than me i kind of got discouraged and i slowed down but i'll get back into it that's yeah, a that's lot cra- that's crazy jay <laughs> that's a lot i hope michael good Carter's for you good. bro for real Jeez, that's, that's jay. i have yeah i have like 37 of the 45 or something like that right now michael carter is a man i'm just excited it's, it's it's a nice inexpensive relatively inexpensive guy to collect and his car's been popping up it's been a lot of fun i'll post a picture uh i've been yeah when it's up. done all right, let's get into let's get into play of the week. 
Jay said it's an all-time one. We normally have five for this, but Jay said it's so good. We couldn't trim it down. We had to have six. So we've got six this week. All right, let me blow my screen up here. This one is going to be from Ping51693. JRV says, play of the week. I found this Rogers at a 10 listed for $2. The guy must not have known it was a gold at a 10. Listed for 100 and instantly sold for some national money. Have a great week, guys. Ping. So, so for those that aren't watching, it's a 2020 Donruss Optic Dominators Aaron Rodgers. Um, and he sold it. He paid $1.99 plus $1 shipping and sold it for 100 free shipping. Um, so a couple things that stand out on this. One, it doesn't look like he knew it was gold because Aaron Rodgers' pants match the color of the card. So this could be one that like somebody might see and be like, oh, it's team color match there. It's not an actual gold. This, there are other designs in this that we've seen in the past. Like I can tell you from experience, I've seen this where like, you know, collectors are going through a box and like, oh, I found this one one black. It looked like it was a base card. Um, so this, this kind of stuff happens. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing could have been, this has happened to us before. Sometimes what will happen is you accidentally list a card intended for auction as a buy it now. So mm. you intended this card to go for a dollar 99 as a starting bid and get mm -hmm. bids. Instead, you put buy it now rather than cancel it and end up in a Facebook scammers group or get called out for it or have somebody leave you negative feedback. You just eat the potential loss, not worth the headache. You sell it for $1.99. A um, couple things here, but definitely a heck of a play. It's a good find. You have to know, what you, I mean, like not everyone on earth is looking for Aaron Rodgers 2020 Donruss Optic. So clearly Ping's a fan of Rodgers with that profile picture. So yep. good job by him, by them. Yeah, I uh, I don't know. I'd love to, to your point, know how long it was up for buy it now, or if yeah, this person too. was just like, but proper play feels like two to a hundred, no complaints. Yeah, definitely not. All right, next play, Jay. All right, this one's uh, a bit longer. This is from the Card Father thirteen. Sit back and listen up. Those cards collecting dust in your closet can make you some real cash. Oh uh, my man. Uh, it says, I have, I have the same story as most in the hobby started out collecting as a kid, grew it out during my call, grew out of it during my college years and got back into the hobby during the pandemic 2020. I dug up my old cards and had a blast sorting through them, plucked out my best ones and sent them to PSA in a bulk submission for 12 bucks a card. I was a patient Panda and waited 15 months for some ice submission. One of the cards I got back was a PSA 10 copy of Nolan Ryan's 1999 tops finest refractor, which is a pop 12 in a PSA 10. I timed the listing of the card at the beginning of the baseball season at $3.99, and after some back-and-forth negotiation, I ended up accepting an offer for $2.25 on May 25th. Card ladder had it valued at $187. All in all, I made a net profit of around $200 after PSA and eBay fees. Not bad for knocking off dust in my closet, not to mention all the other cards I got back that I'm holding as a long-term play. By the way, I'm born and raised in Ohio, but Lou should give me a pass since the card I submitted was a Houston Astros card. <laughs> Love the show. Keep uh, I love the show and have listened to every episode. Keep up the great work. Thank First you, off, Dominic. shout out to Dominic for listening to every episode. I mean, it's probably why he started with a, you know, car talk. Uh, OG intro. It, intro. OG intro. Um, but yeah, what a what a play. I love this. This is what it's all about. This is you find it in your closet. You submit to PSA. The idea of waiting 15 months for a PSA submission is still crazy to me. Um, but credit to Dominic for powering through. Um, I'm a little iffy on the Ohio thing. I got to think about it. <laughs> the OG card talk intro is great. Or ad. Patient Panda. It's a good play. Yeah. When I first saw this, show, when I first saw this card, I thought it was like a Topps Tiffany. That's what it looked like. It didn't look like a refractor yeah, until like I Tiffany. read it. Like I didn't really pay close enough attention to it. I was just reading it and it I was like, that looks like a Tiffany card. It's very, uh, very cool. I've never even seen that card. Heck of a play. All right, next one. I think it's mislabeled, too. Do you see that? Oh, Tops Ryan Finest? What is that? That might be a Nolan Ryan set from 99. Oh, maybe. You know, they do those, like, sets where they, like, reprint a bunch of cards. Mm -hmm. Zipper's going off. <laughs> All right. This is from T Money Luke. Tom Lucas on IG says, Hey, guys. My play of the week comes with a little bit of luck involved. 
I recently subscribed to a popular card subscription box. Love the idea of getting 8-7 to seven hobby packs a month, and with a small eBay business, figured it might help with my inventory as well. Through this comp... Uh, or though this company has many different tiers, I opted for the basic box, which cost me around $60 a month after shipping. In only my second box, I got a pack of 2022 Bowman Baseball, which I was delighted to see. With a 1 in 24 odds of pulling an auto, I wasn't expecting much, but opened the pack and found a Bowman Chrome first orange auto of Max Muncy. It's numbered to 25. I did a little research and saw this kid was a 19-year-old prospect recently taken at 25th overall in 2021 draft by the A's. After doing a little bit eBay research, I noticed that the last comp for this card was around two grand. I immediately took some pictures and posted it to my page. I did a seven-day auction starting at a thousand. Happy with anything since I only paid around sixty bucks for my subscription box. The card sold for two thousand five hundred and fifty dollars, netting me around twenty-two hundred dollars after eBay fees, shipping, and insurance. It's pulls like this that really make your day, week, and month, and also prove that subscription boxes can be great for the hobby. Thank you, guys. This is Max Muncy's brother. Like, what's happening here? I'm trying to figure this out. Yeah, that's what. I, again, I don't follow baseball, but there's no relation to the other one. None. How is that possible? <laughs> it doesn't even seem like possible. The pick came nine years after Oakland. Sorry for uh, derailing this submission. Uh, nine years after they because the A's also drafted the other Max Muncy. Yeah. So they took this. They took another Max Muncy who has no relation to the other one. This is wild. That's insane. What is the odds? Spelled of the exact same way. The exact same. That's wild. Hunter Renfro, same thing. Yeah, that's another one. But at least that's E and W. This is a spell. Yeah, say Renfro thing. spelled differently. Yeah. Like not wild. knowing baseball when I saw this, I, again, just not knowing baseball at all. I thought this was that guy. I was like, man, I thought Max Muncy been in the league a while. That's why odd. I'm like, is this an old card? Like, like, it seems kind of odd to get a, a first Bowman on this dude. I thought he was like. 25 years old, 30 years right. old. And then the other thing I thought I was like, that kind of looks like the 2017 design a little bit. So I thought it was a 2017 Muncie and I was like, what's happening? Yeah. Wild. Do you think that the buyer thought it was bought the wrong card? No, because this other guy's a real prospect. I just, I just was reading about him a little bit. Yeah, this is a big time prospect. Yeah, First Bowman Orange Auto. Like that's one of the cards to have for, for baseball. Gotcha. So. All right, next play. Heck of a play. All right, Bean Machine says, at the beginning of the year, I was brainstorming on some golf card plays that don't involve household names like Tiger and Phil. While I was checking out where the majors would be played this year, I noticed the U.S. Open is at the Country Club of Brookline in Boston. I'm a fan of Keegan Bradley, who is lo- who is a local Boston boy, and I realized he might have some home field advantage. The best card I could find was a 2012 Leaf Metal Auto at a 50, which I bid 13 for the card on eBay and won it at 1050. It was still a couple of months till the US Open, so I sent it to SGC and got a 1010 auto and got it back just in time for the event. Keegan was in the mix all weekend and his name was all over IG in the TV coverage. I was so busy with family and watching golf that I forgot to post it for sale during the tournament. But two days after the US Open, I remembered it, threw it up on the golf and tennis card collectors group on Facebook for $150. Somebody claimed it for my full asking price. After shipping and grading, I made $100. Love that you guys talk about alternative sports like golf and F1, so please keep it up. I like the play. Big Keegan guy. What's Purple. happening with Keegan recently? He just had a good US Open. He was in the mix. Good for him. Yeah. Um, 13, what did he pay to grade that? 25 bucks. We paid. Yeah, it's got 40 bucks in it. 40 bucks in it. Quick 65 bucks in a weekend. Not bad. Wait, no. Dude, he, I like my golf. For 150, he made 100. Oh, he made 100. Okay, quick hundy. Yeah. Love that. A little 10Xer. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, that's that awesome. Place. I love the look ahead, see what's coming. Like I love mm-hmm. like that play. We've had some people win that and win play of the week in the past from that. That to me is just one of those uh, that's all time things. I mean, I, I like I want to preface. This is the first time I think we've ever had a dog in contention for play of the week. That's a good point. You're not wrong about that. Shout out to Bean. I mean, this is the first time ever. This is a card talk first. We have a dog in the mix for play of yeah. the week winner. I you doubt. think so? I don't know if that's. I think it is, but it might not. I don't think it's our first. I feel like we've had a pup. Before. Really? Yeah, we've had Zipper in the mix like every week, trying one play of the week. So that's oh, not wrong. 
<laughs> All right, next. Oh my gosh. All right. We have a novel. All right, yeah, this is uh Okay. Here we go. I got back this is from Kyle Christian on IG. It says I got back into collecting baseball cards around COVID, watching Phil Hughes rip wax on his YouTube channel. Growing up a Yankees fan, it brought back nostalgia, and I decided to get back into the game, trying my luck at prospecting. The current release was 2020 Bowman at the time, which was headlined by Jason Dominguez. I quickly realized how much his cards were selling for and decided to take a different approach and focus on Anthony Volpe at a much better quote-unquote value. At the time, Volpe had missed the prior year with Mono and was really struggling in low A, so I could pick up his cards at a much more reasonable price. My thought process, real savvy here, was that it was a Yankees first round pick who was, who was a position player. And I was fascinated that he had changed his signature after his initial Bowman release to a shorter version. In my mind, I thought this brought about something that could be valuable in the future. In dumb luck, I proceeded to buy every first Bowman color auto I could get my hands on to pursue the rainbow. I then sent in about a dozen or so cards to PSA for grading right before they shut down and consequently held my cards in limbo for 14 months. Little did I know how much not being able to access my cards would help as I couldn't sell too early. Volpe simply crushed the ball in 2021 and skyrocketed up the prospecting prospect list, peaking as he cracked the MLB pop, pipeline top 10. As this was happening, I finally proceeded to get my cards back and immediately began to take some profits. My first handful of sales were great. Sold a Blue Auto PSA 9 for 1900 an Atomic PSA 9 for almost three grand, a first edition gold PSA 10 for 1800 and several others which were awesome. The big winners, however, came in the last batch of PSA submission. Gold Auto at a 50 PSA 10 and an Orange Auto at a 10, or at a 25 PSA 10. I made a deal initially for the gold off Facebook through PayPal Goods and Services for 12.5K. A few weeks later, he came back and bought the orange for 20K PayPal. Overall, I've collected over $40,000 in total proceeds so far and still have several autos, Sapphire, etc. to go. I'm even going to keep a base auto for the PC. Ultimately, I got super lucky in picking the right prospect and finding the right buyer. The kicker to the whole thing is that I never received any PSA upcharges and only had to pay the old $15 ultra modern grading fee. I will attach images of the transaction and the overall collection. That's bananas. This is insane. That's wild. There's not that much luck built into this, to be honest. Like, of course, you find the right buyer or whatever, but this is how it works. This is wild. Volpe is a really good prospect, too. Like, he's legit. Really? Yeah, he's going to be the Yankee shortstop next year. Zipper, chill. He's definitely going to be the Yankee shortstop next year. Really? That's crazy. Twenty thousand dollars for an orange PSA ten. That's but yeah, I mean that is wild. The part where I, one, a sneaky thing about him is that he changed his auto. His auto is significantly better now, so I think that really put his career on a good trajectory. If I'm being honest with you, so mm -hmm. that was great. It's a good job by Kyle. It, this is this takes real work. You have to re you have to get it right. You have to guess correctly when you're making when you're making a decision like this. Yeah, that's crazy. Wild, wild, wild. I love the logic behind it, right? Like Yankees, position player, first bowman. Like there's a there's a major guy at play. I think this this has other this has potential across the sport, not necessarily to the extreme level, but like when everybody's focused on the guy, like Jason Dominguez was, like when that was a big deal. Sometimes there are other players outside of those guys that aren't like the number one that have shot to be, you know, shot to be a superstar. Yeah, I think there was so much energy on Dominguez when this. I remember when this happened. When when this whole product came out, there was so much energy on Dominguez, and Volpe was a highly ranked guy who had a who had a uh, an off year because he was sick and missed like an entire season. And he's been raking ever since. He started off slow this year, I think, but he's been hot now. Yeah, he's going to be the shortstop next year or the year after. 100%. Wild time for cards when you have Jason Dominguez, Zion, Otani, Joe Burrow. Like some of those hype trains were wild. Yep wild all with covid it's crazy all right next play jay any of those guys working out just checking in yeah, yes come on the one who bro otani come on man oh i forgot about otani You're i was thinking wild. i was thinking about i was thinking about zion and i was focused on zion and uh dominguez got you okay wait, wait 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 we're on it look you have an update about otani 
Yeah, I've I've moved off my take. I've made that very clear. That's he, I'm Lou did I'm, tweet on it. He went on record and acknowledged it. I'm on record oh, acknowledging it. I also think like it's fine. Like him and Trout are gonna be over it with the Angels, just like being awesome, not winning any games, and that's fine. I was a little bit worried about Otani for a minute. I'm no longer worried. They're gonna be bad. He's, he's gonna have great stats. Do you think he's a guy? He's awesome. Him and Trout are awesome. They will never win anything, and that's all I care about. So I'm good. He can be a Hall of Famer for all you care about. But he's not a flash in the pan. No, I take it back. I I I I was wrong about that. Ty, do you think he's you'll change your player. do you think you'll change your stance on any of your players anytime soon? Such as it's been a let's just say it's been a week of Ryan admitting that he was wrong about the LeBron logo man. <laughs> It's me admitting I was wrong about Otani, and it's you holding firm on your positions. Yeah, I don't know what positions are yeah. unclear at this time. <laughs> yeah, there's no positions that are unclear on your end. Right on, like... right on cue. All right, let's go. Last one. All right, next one. <laughs> Cardboard Craig. Craig says, this is my self for play of the week. I bought a large bag of ticket stubs at a local flea market for $40. The bag was full of a variety of stubs, so I thought I'd take a flyer, hoping there was something there was something important in there. Sadly, didn't find any gems. But with there being almost 800 tickets, I knew there was value. Some of the more fun stubs included movie tickets from Batman, Indiana Jones, and Titanic, concert tickets from Bob Dylan and Madonna, and a large lot of Chargers tickets. I decided to put up the stubs in lots to make selling a little bit easier. I made a lot of what over, is going on? I made a lot of over 500 Padres tickets and sold them for $500 for a dollar per ticket. I did really well, but also save some meat on the bone for the buyer. After all of the sales, I'll net about 800 bucks. That'll set me up for some fun at the national. Then he, he uh, ends with Tyler's favorite two words at the very end. He had some with uh, we are. Unbelievable, man. Where are people finding these things? See, so imagine if it just said the. Yeah, like we are, like it, like it's not a complete sentence. It just, it's the same thing as no, the. Like you could go anywhere in the world and say. Yeah, we like are. we are like, lame. What we're talking about. No, you, you, you guys. No different than the that. Buckeyes. We are lame. No. Yeah, that's exactly no. how it is. It's a nice jersey of a quarterback that left your university and then went on to bury you guys. You still rock it. It's funny. How's Penn State doing? You do like three teams. Loyal to my school. I I like Ohio State. And Joe Burrow's an Ohio State alum. Are you rocking a Quinn Ewers jersey? A Texas jersey or no? No, he's not an Ohio State alum. Joe Burrow is. He has an Ohio State degree. We both do. We have a lot in common, remember? We talked about that's what you're doing. Right. Okay, got it. We talked about this, remember? Both went to the Super Bowl, both didn't win a Super Bowl, both graduated from Ohio State. I like Like, this play a lot. (laughs) I do like this play. This is the the forty dollars for a bag of tickets is is very reminiscent of sixty dollars sixty dollar bag of cards. If we're being honest, no sixty pound bag. Of sixty cards. pounds, sorry, sixty pound bag of cards. Back to back bags. Yeah, I love this. This is awesome. I wonder what's in that fi- like five hundred Padres tickets for five hundred dollars. Like, was there some? I have a feeling there's got to be something sneaky. There has, there has to be. Right? To be. There's no way. There's no way there's a $40 bag with over 800 tickets that doesn't have something in it that's sneaky. Have the Padres done anything of note in the last 20 it's years? It's not even necessarily the Padres. Is it if they got no hit? If somebody threw a no hitter, like somebody's last game, Tatis' first game, like there has to be something in there. Yeah, I don't know. That's crazy. I mean, either way, made 800 bucks off 40, so we can't, you know. Yeah, that's uh, a huge W yeah. for Greg. That's a huge win, but man. I'll just keep going on record that I have no interest in buying another man's tickets. Yeah, I'm aligned. It's just still, it's so cool though. Like, I don't know. I'm not a ticket guy. I don't buy like tickets other than the ones I've been to. I just think it's unique. Like, I don't know. It's it's a cool piece of history, right? I've got newspapers. It just it's it is a cool piece of history, regardless if you want it or not. It is cool, especially with everything being digital now. Like, they're not gonna make tickets again. Like, there's so much of that stuff's digital That's true. now. Is there one more, Jay? Like, if I can get the last Astros physical ticket, I think that'd be something I want to own. Yeah, that would be cool. Um, I mean, the answer has to be Volpe to this, right? 
Yeah, it's hard yeah. to turn down that. Like, I, I get back in, watch yes. Hoku, nostalgia. Probably you think so? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, good. So the three of us are aligned. Congrats to Kyle. What a win. It's kind of a layup win for Kyle, I feel. Yeah, listen, if you have a whole rainbow of a top prospect in baseball and you sell the you sell it for forty grand for just one card, twenty grand for one card, you're gonna win play of the week. That's my promise to you. Yeah, we did have a dog up there for contention, just didn't get it done this week. But you tried Bean. Shout out to Bean for putting in a you know, just a great effort. Yep. But it was an all time week, so you know, shout, shout out, Bean. out shout out Bean for sure. All right, latest launch. You have 2022 football product coming out this week. If Chronicles draft picks will release this week, you have Chronicles soccer and there's, Oh, a big one, a big one. That is a long overdue SP authentic hockey hmm. has Kareel future watch autos in it. So SP authentic hockey drops this week. It is a, it is a big release week. So you got some soccer, some football, and uh, some hockey. So, Cool. I think it'll be interesting to see the 2022. What's up, Jay? That wasn't the only dog. We have a winner that's a dog in the Play of the Week group chat. The dog actually was it? Ruthie's card collection is a dog. What was the play? I knew. Uh, I knew the whole time. Good job, Ty. You were saying that initially. Yeah, if you go to Ruthie's card collection on, on Insta, you'll see. I mean, every post is the dog with his cards or her cards. Respect. I don't remember this person winning play of the week. But congrats. Sorry, second dog. Let's go. Yeah. We're, um, we're dog people. Yeah, we're, we're a dog uh, show. Real? Wow. You, you I don't know if we can say our, we're a dog show, though. I don't think that's fair. I mean, our team, our, our mascot is a cat. Uh, that's fair. Uh, oh, what did you say? You're taking a shot our, at our mascot is no. No, I'm taking a shot at you, and you just calling us a dog show when your cat is our mascot. We are the three of us are pro dog. That's fair to say. Yes, very pro dog. Okay, I'm pro dog as well. Zipper just happens to insert himself into the podcast. I can't do anything about that. My man Ty came sick <laughs> under the weather with poor internet. Yeah, I respect Wizard that. of the Oz mode. Wi- Wizard, of- what is- Wizard of Oz mode. <laughs> Wizard of the Oz. <laughs> Wizard of Oz mode. And then just out here just trying to bury us this week. Just just coming for, you know, Lou and, Lou and I's throats this week. Yeah, just- voice of God. Attack action. Wait, what? <laughs> he said, you know, I've been the there. stupid. <laughs> Michael Porter Jr. still not coming off that. This guy's the best. Lou just absolutely throwing us under the bus because he likes dogs, but we're we got a cat mascot. You started it, right? Uh, not fair. I'm I'm a neutral observer. I'm pro Tyler. <laughs> yeah, here we go. I'm man. pro Ryan. I Ryan love Lou. Just it. he's just off to the side, just stirring the pot up, and then he's like neutral. Um, I did want to say one quick thing before we finish off for the week. We have a new segment starting this week. Um, Aaron from Slab Stock is writing a monthly market report. Um, that we're going to feature on the website. And then to go along with that, myself, Aaron, maybe Nate from Slab Stocks, and then a rotating cast of us will be joining him for like basically a recap of the article. Um, that will nice. come out on Saturdays. The first Saturday of every month is the goal. We'll see what happens. We'll do our best to key to that. Hopefully it'll be interesting. Um, I think everyone will enjoy it, and I hope you get a chance to check it out. Fire. We will have more announcements coming soon about the event at the National be mm-hmm. Friday night, so Jay will uh, will give us some more information about that, and we will uh, we'll probably talk about it here very soon. So stay tuned for uh, announcements on the social, and then upcoming episodes of Car Talk as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We'll try to get back to some Facebook Q and A next week. So if you guys have questions you want answered, feel free to reach out to Jay uh, on the Facebook group Car Talk Pod or on IG or Twitter at Car Talk Pod as well. We'll have some uh, we'll have some questions next week as well. Peace and love, everybody. Cool. See you guys later. Feel better. Peace, guys. Everyone.